Hello and uh, welcome to Nikon Report, your weekly roundup of all the latest Nikon news and all other photographic announcements that we found interesting. It's Constant here and here is Becky. All right, we're at number 38 already. Wow. All right, and it's going to be a quite a good one because... Juicy? Yes. It got some Z9 news, <laughs> according to Tom Hogan. Ah. And a bunch of other stuff. So, but let's start with some promotion that we run first. Yes. So the month of October, Grace Always means so you get 10% off on secondhand items, and that's up to £150. Yeah, so maximum discount is £150, which means that you can buy yourself a Z6 and a lens and Ooh. a few other bits and pieces and get £150 off. Maybe even FTZ adapter. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. This is, I, I heard we've got a couple of 2470s as well. We do. Awesome. Yeah, you could get yourself a whole kit um, that includes film bodies, accessories, battery grips, you name it. So uh, feel free to go over to our website and just use the code October. October 10 off. Uh, just a note that payment by finance is not included in the offer. Okay, and if you live abroad, you better order over the phone because uh, we need to figure out what's the shipping cost, right? Yeah, I mean, for Europe, it works out for you, but for everywhere else, it doesn't. Okay, okay. Well, I think we should just talk about us for the rest of the podcast. Why not? Because it's all about us. <laughs> it's just that interesting. All right, well, no, let's go to the hot potato. So the Z9, mm. we don't have anything official, but, 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 but... Uh, according to Tom Hogan, he expects Nikon to have presentations right. with the dealers mm. in two weeks' time. So Ooh. at least in the United States, at this moment, we haven't heard anything. And even if we were here, we wouldn't tell you. No, it's true. Um, saying that, his article is called Fasten Your Seatbelts, Turbulence Ahead. So Buckle up. Is he expecting something? Well, I, his problem with Nikon, and to be honest with you, we all have problems with Nikon. I think the, the main one is we want everything right now. Yes. And obviously the way the Nikon thinks, they think, well, we want to make sure that we do it right. Actually, Tom thinks that they're rushing that night. And I feel like it should be here right now yeah. in my hands and in your hands, mm. and everyone else's hands. Yes. You know, but what he thinks that Z9 actually was supposed to be announced together with a DX body. So he remember like we had D3 and D300. Yeah. D5, D500, mm. yada, yada. So um, so he thinks that was the original plan. Now, this is obviously not, not going to happen. Mm. So, and if it would happen, we would probably hear rumors about some Z90 or something like this, you know. So. Yes, I see what you mean. Okay. So we're thinking no DX body because of lack of semiconductors? Lack of everything, really. Yeah. You know. Lack of positive attitude, I would say. <laughs> uh, but what he says that we may see Z9 and a long lens, so he thinks it's 400 mil. Okay. Which makes sense. I think 400 is kind of the the most asked long lens that you know that people crave for. And then the next one up will be something like 600 mil to go with it. So he thinks it's going to be a Z9 with 400. He thinks that Z9 auto focus system is actually going to be better than the D6, which he calls the state of the art. Wow. And also A1, which is currently considered to be the best AF system. That's impressive. Now, a lot of people hype the camera up so much that he warns and says, well, look, I expect it to be better, but some people think it's going to be the best thing in the world. And we talked about this. We always say, do wait for the camera to come out, yeah. not just based on specifications, get into the real hands of real photographers that take pictures, not on the internet, but on actual jobs. Yes. And then let's see what they say. And I agree with him on this one, but according to him, it's still going to beat all the contenders. So in two weeks' time, a lot of dealers should have their presentations, uh, which means that probably around November, mm. we may see the official announcements. That would be exciting. Would be exciting. Finally. Imagine, yeah, imagine knowing when the camera comes out and uh, sitting on the podcast and say, sorry guys, there's no Z9 news. <laughs> I think we'll manage. With a straight face. <laughs> With completely straight face. We love you all. Uh, so, yeah. Good one. Yeah. What do you think? You positive? I am positive about the Z9. I think it's interesting that Tom Hogan thinks it's rushed. Uh, or that he doesn't want it to be rushed, maybe, mm -hmm. is the idea. It depends on what the technology is, you know. If mm -hmm. it's completely new in every sense, new sensor, new AF processor, AF modes, everything, then I can understand the need to make sure that it's perfect beforehand. And maybe this is the reason why we haven't seen it sooner. Maybe Nikon have been trying to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Some speculation was that 
they held back from announcing it because they wanted the R3 specs out first. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Nikon necessarily worked like that. No, I actually put it in the misconceptions here, mm. but we can talk about it now, actually. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's, that's not how Nikon worked. They wouldn't redesign a camera based on what another manufacturer is doing, generally speaking. Yeah, from the charter we hear, not on the internet, but just in the industry as well, mm. we heard that... Z9 specs were finalized around March, April. Yeah. So A1 came out around March th this time. So, you know, at that point, the specs of Z9 were already in place, set in stone. So they they may potentially tweak something, yeah. but it wouldn't be a significant change that would delay the camera for so long because it would require probably another year in development for that. Right. So my thought is that instead, when the Olympics photographers were using it, something must have come up and either that involved a reconfiguration of something a little bit more major mm -hmm. uh, or that just because of the supply chain demand mm -hmm. and troubles that we've been having over the last sort of year yeah. that that has had a knock-on effect and will affect the Z9. It's one or the other, possibly a combination of both. Well, that's true. I mean, uh, the, the rumor is that they actually will use, you say, what kind of technologies? It is an alien technology, let's be honest. Yeah. So just no one's seen it before. Yeah. But the reason why he says it's not like, don't rush it is mm. because obviously... The way the Nikon designed their cameras is if you know how to use the system, you should be able to produce fantastic results, even with cameras like Z6 and Z7, which are not considered even. to be <laughs> the fastest in the world. Sure. But he says, I spoke to a guy who I helped to set up AF system, and now he said I get 100% keepers, yeah. which is really good. Yeah. Now, what he says is the reason why he doesn't want it to be rushed is because maybe autofocus system is going to be really good, but in the hands of professional photographers. Mm. What a lot of people coming from a Sony cam say that they get really good results having the camera on automatic. Right. Now, obviously, I have a moral question. When you're buying $6,000 camera and you don't know how to use autofocus, what's the point <laughs> but obviously one one point is he says everything becomes so fast that um if you are let's say a reporter you need to deliver things fast and you need to make sure you have good results so mm. maybe your technique sh you know or, well technique is there but let's say maybe you're going to get the camera on the day one and you need to already produce worthy images on day one and yes. then maybe you will be learned later so but the way he, he says is nikon basically is good at Designing the system, yeah, which you can, which is really fast in the hands of people who know how to use it, yeah. But the idea is, how do you dumb it down so that you can just stick it to automatic mm. and get good results straight away? Mm. Oh, there we go. Good question. Another misconception that we are keep hearing on our comments in the videos below and obviously on the internet, people say, where is my Z6 and Z7 Mark II firmware? I want it right now. Yes. Well, if you look at actually news based on this, it's actually based on rumors. There was no official confirmation from Nikon that they're developing the software. Now, the rumor was on Nikon rumors. We hear it separately and from separate sources as well that something's been in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely there, but actually there's nothing officially stated. So technically it doesn't exist. Yes. So there's no point of asking and demanding for it if it doesn't exist officially. Now, from our point of view is I think again, a lot of writing on Z9 announcements. Mm -hmm. So a lot of features that Z9 will have can potentially trickle down into Z6 and Z7 cameras. That's the idea, right? Yeah, wire firmware update. So our advice is do buckle up, wait for Z9 announcement, and hopefully the firmware will be there for your Z6 and Z7 cameras. Mm -hmm. On the subject of firmware, Nikon have released a new D6 firmware update, version 1.33. Again. Mm. So this fixed a little oddity of an issue uh, that in very rare instances would result in a burst of two photos being taken with a single press of the shutter release button when single frame was selected for the release mode. So I do that sometimes in single, mm -hmm. click, click. But I think that I just took my finger off and put it back on again. So obviously they found out that was something that needed fixing. And oh, they I see. Okay. A firmware update. Well, obviously all the research and development in the firmware at Nikon goes to developing firmware for D6 and patching it up. So don't expect <laughs> that 607 firmware anytime soon. That's not true. But hopefully, at some point with that 9, we'll see some Z6 and Z7 updates. Yeah, I think that also the D6 being a pro body, obviously pros are using it day in, day out. They're going to find these oddities that you don't necessarily find with casual use of any, yeah. any other camera, which is why it's had so much, so many patch-ups. Absolutely. We see updates every month pretty much, yeah, isn't basically. it? Yeah, basically. So it's, it's pretty much the most updated camera from Nikon right now. And I'm glad. 
because, you know, pros need the updates. All right, well, let's go to some sad news. Yes. Three more Nikkei F-mount lenses appear to be discontinued in Canada. Mm. Um, so dealers got a notice stating that you can't no longer order 8 to 400 lens, 105 micro VR, and also 1224 lens. Now, we checked with our dealers, mm. the Wheeler dealer, and they say that we can still order 105 and 8 to 400, but 1224 DX lens has been discontinued for quite some time ago, at least a couple of years. That's right. So... Either they're doing just an update of Nikon Canada's website or they're actually discontinuing them. Who knows? The 80 to 400 is an odd one. That yeah. I wouldn't have expected. That's true. So I personally think that we probably will see 80 to 400. So maybe not so much 105, yeah. which I think would be nice to have. But at the moment, actually, we do get a lot of them secondhand because yeah. people buy the Z micro lenses. So if you do look for one, it's actually cheaper to get a nice secondhand one at the moment. Yeah. In Japan, Nikon also issued a um, notice about temporary suspending orders for several products. The two main ones are AFP 7300 VR lens, which is a full frame 7300, and also MBN 11 battery pack for Z6 and Z7 Mark II cameras. There's also power connectors EP5A and EP5B. However, they also issued a notice about resumption of acceptance of orders for Hotshoe AS15, it's the most important item. Very important. TTL Corda C29 and also EH5D um, AC adapter. Hmm. You can read more information on Nikon Japan's website on this. Excellent. And on a positive note, Nikon have officially launched the ZFC in 28mm special edition kit, as well as the 40mm lens in Japan as of the 1st of October. So for our Japanese viewers... You can now order those and hopefully they'll arrive sooner rather than later. As an impromptu update on the 40 millimeter lens, which we do have several orders for, Nikon confirmed that they had allocated stock to their dealers in the UK, but they have some, let's call it logistics delays. Mm -hmm. Still on the truck. So what I've encountered now, and this is between you, me and our viewers mm -hmm. here. So don't tell anyone. So don't tell anyone. Is that um, we now can't seem to get tracking information from the logistics partners. They send the goods and they get here when they get here. And they're gone with the wind. <laughs> no, they do get here eventually. But the problem is that I'm not able to track them now. So the 40 millimeter lenses will hopefully be with us sooner rather than later. As I say, they've been allocated. They are en route, but... On the ferry from Calais to Dover. <laughs> but they are stuck in the Suez Canal. No, but where they physically are, I could not tell you. And neither can Nick on, apparently. So effectively, what you say is any day now is just a question of them when they're going to come in. Yeah. Exactly. So, but they're en route they, to us. They left somewhere and they have yet to arrive here. Fantastic. Well, thanks for the update, Becky. <laughs> You're the, the update from the fields. Yeah. Next one up, we're going to be in Dover with Boarding. a microphone <laughs> saying, here's the truck with 40 mil lenses crossing the border. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, the next couple of news are in a segment which we call Things We Don't Understand. Sorry. The first one up, I'm going to read the title. You're going to read the rest. Okay. Uh, Nikon introduces the Eclipse CIL Plus Biological Microscope, which helps reduce eye strain and is comfortable to operate. Excellent. So the Eclipse CIL Plus is a biological microscope which eliminates the need for light intensity adjustment after changing magnifications Ooh. and has an ergonomic design that takes into account the physical strain incurred during extended observations. So long term microscope users will know all too well the issues of back and neck strain along I've, along with eye fatigue associated with operating and observing specimens under a microscope every day. And to reduce these common fatigue problems, Nikon has designed the Eclipse CIL Plus biological microscope with the intent of eliminating unnecessary operator movements while still maintaining the high optical performance of the existing model. Which we know all too well. So, yes, we're very familiar with observing specimens under microscopes day in, day out. Well, literally, taxing. till 1st of October, it was such a pain in the neck, literally a pain in the neck, as well as eye strain, to operate the microscope. But um, and finally, they released one which is comfortable to operate. Excellent. So for any microbiologists out there or anyone using a microscope for extended periods of time, take a look at the Eclipse CIL Plus Biological Microscope. High five. <laughs> the next one up, Nikon is releasing two new optical processing machines, LaserMeister 1000SE and LaserMeister 1000S. Yay. Okay, so Nikon Corporation is pleased to announce these two what are they? Optical processing machines. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I am none the wiser. Okay. 
just get rid of that bit. The optical processing machine is Nikon's original processing system that performs a variety of high precision processes using a laser. Process. So it's cool. <laughs> It's core, te- <laughs> it's core technologies are cultivated from development and sales of semiconductor lithography systems. Mm, I know semiconductors in this sentence. <laughs> no. And there's a shortage of them everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. I can't say the rest of this. So basically, the yeah. So they do exist. And if you want to read more about them, do go to the link under the video below. Yay. Now... A very peculiar one, Nikon issued a technical service advisory for users of Coolpix L25 digital camera. How long has this camera been in existence? Just looking at the picture of it, it was designed probably in the year 2000. Yes, so it says, it has recently become clear in some very rare cases if the camera is subjected to a strong shock, such as being dropped or struck, heat may be generated from inside the camera and the top cover of the Coolpix L25 may become deformed and a small gap may be visible near the shutter release button. This may occur regardless of whether the camera is turned on or off. There is no danger of fire, however. So they've included this in their uh, service advisory articles. You can have a little look. If you're an owner of an L25, then have a little look at that article. We'll include the link in the description Those box. Those two people. Yeah. And uh, they will offer a free inspection and modification service to prevent the possibility of the problem occurring. Okay, so you do basically send it to Nick and they'll fix it for you. They put a little dot with a sharpie at the tripod uh, screw um, on the base of the camera and that's it. They go for 25 quid on eBay. Wow. Next one up, let's go to the third party news and this one is actually a very important news. So company TT Artisan Mm. will soon announce a new 32mm f2.8 full frame lens for Nick and Z mount. Why is it important? Because It's autofocus lens. You understand the significance of that, yeah? Before, we had only one third-party company, Biltrox, which now have three AF lenses, 24, 35, and 85, 1.8 lenses. Mm. We're going to have a second company joining the group. Of autofocus Z lens designers. Exactly. So excellent. what does it tell me? It's 32 millimeter, it's full frame, it's 2.8. So 32 millimeter, 2.8 should be fairly cheap. We'll have autofocus. So it's going to be an interesting one because obviously you now have 3518 from Nikon, 3518 from Wheeltrucks, mm-hmm. and 35 from uh, f2.8 from TC Arson. And, and that 32. one is. Exactly. And this one is small and light, so probably going to be good for street photography. I think it's going to be an interesting comparison. It's going to be cheap. What also tells me that we're now getting more companies joining Nikon yeah. uh, with AF lenses. So hopefully, Tamron and Sigma will join us. Really hoping. Together. Very soon. In happiness. <laughs> also, Irix, is that how you pronounce it? Yep. Irix announced a new 30mm f1.4 lens for the Nikon F mount. This is a manual focus lens. Uh, it is weather sealed. It's 86mm front diameter. Mm. That's big. Chunky. For a 30mm. Mm-hmm. But it is 30 as opposed to 35. It's going to weigh 851 grams and the prices will start at $675. Oh so my. if you're interested in a third party manual focus lens, go check that out. And it's interesting because for F mount. So while Nikon according to the internet narrative, is discontinued of mount lenses. Mm. Other companies introduced them. Mm. I want to talk to you about that because obviously we see the rumors of uh, F-mount lenses being discontinued all the time. Yeah. So that's just a normal thing on Nikon rumors. It's like weekly update, this being discontinued, this um, on Nikon Japan, they call everything old product nowadays. Yes. So what's your opinion on that? Are they gently nudging us to look into the Z system? Is that the way it's going? Or do you think that's actually, we may still see some sales and introductions in F-mount and DSLR? I mean, I th- as, far as, as far as I've understood from talks that we've had with anyone that works for Nikon, Mm -hmm. their focus is the Z system. Mm -hmm. And that's really where they're putting all their attention. Mm -hmm. I would kind of draw parallels with film and the move from film to digital, because obviously they announced the D1 and the D2, but they still were producing film cameras Mm -hmm. for a few years afterwards, quite a few years afterwards. And then the last camera is obviously the F6, which had a very long run. But I imagine that that will be a similar situation. And this is just my speculation and could be entirely wrong. I'm sure that there are going to be plenty of DSLR users mm-hmm. that would panic. Um, That's true. We had the discussion about this on a live stream that we had two weeks ago now. So yeah. do check it out. It's very interesting. 
I think you're absolutely right. I think, yeah, we are looking to that system. And uh, as someone pointed out, the manufacturer and marketing want us to switch to that. Yes. The opportunity for DSLR users now is to get all this stuff reasonably cheap secondhand mm. Mm. because obviously a lot of people are trading in while switching to new systems. So you can pick up a lenses for half the price. Let's say something like 2470, 2.8 uh, can be had reasonably cheap, 105 micros. Yeah. If only there would be a UK company that would have a sale on their secondhand stock. If only. I if see only. what you're going with this. So, um, <laughs> But obviously plugging us, I think it is an interesting one. It's a, it's a definitely good opportunity for people who want to stick to DSLRs yeah. to pick up their equipment reasonably cheap because, yeah, lots of trading happening. Uh, but also it also tells us that, yes, maybe in five years down the road, we probably won't look at DSLRs as much as we look at Zs. Yeah. Because they will probably catch up in terms of technology or will outperform. So, again, Tom Hogan says that Z9 potentially will outperform D6 AF system, which is state of the art. Yeah. You never know. But it's an interesting time we have here, right? It is. And I think it's going to be a slow process. I don't think it's going to happen overnight. It won't be that suddenly there's no DSLR stuff available. It will it will take a long time, just as it took a long time for people to move from manual focus to autofocus, yeah. as we were talking about the other day. Absolutely. Photographers don't necessarily like, particularly working pros, don't like to change their gear overnight mm -hmm. they they like to see that the, t the system is tested and tried before Absolutely. they jump in Absolutely. so that's fair enough i think uh, i think what we see over the next sort of five six years will be very interesting indeed absolutely and then importance of the ftz adapter mm. or its mark ii version if it ever comes out is to allow people to use their dedicated library of equipment yeah of their lenses on that cameras so mm. you don't effectively need to sell all your dsli equipment including lenses and just buy everything brand new no you can just buy a body maybe one lens and then use your existing lenses and then slowly upgrade exactly all right couple of news from software companies we've uh, had an update from capture one so they released the version 14.4 with support of nikon zfc cameras and a bunch of other stuff like tethering for sigmas and Fujis and all that. That's good. So, but the important there is ZFC raw support. Now, Adobe released a sneak peek for their new AI powered masking tool that will be coming to Adobe Raw as well as Lightroom Classic and Lightroom, whatever the the one that no one uses is. So basically, it will allow you to create the mask in the Lightroom, mm. which normally you would do in Photoshop. Yes. It's not as good as Photoshop, but it will still allow you to do more than normal brushes, but obviously brushes are still there. So if you want to have a look at that, do check out uh, their short YouTube videos, uh, just going through their features. I'm looking forward to trying that out. Let's move into review sections. Yay. Okay. Our Chris, Chris Dublu, has reviewed the Nikon Z 50mm f1.2 on his YouTube channel. Do go check that out. Yeah, he kills his cinematography again. Yeah. So I've just, I look at this and I was like, I wish we could do videos like that. Next level. But I do find sometimes reviewing being, uh, reviews being a bit too technical. And it's always nice just to have a review from a passionate people mm -hmm. to that talk about their feelings about this certain product. Because sometimes we don't just buy based on spec sheets. We buy on the feeling. The reason why ZFC for a lot of people becomes this kind of camera that is just joy to use mm. is for exactly the same reason. It's not based on specs, it's based no. on the feeling. Exactly. And the 51.2 is definitely one of those touchy feely type lenses. <laughs> Absolutely. I almost cried. Um, for me personally, I try to ignore this lens because it's quite expensive. And I keep telling myself that I don't need it in my life. I just don't need it in my life. But secretly, I kind of look in looking at it just from the from the corner exactly. of your eye <laughs> i'm just thinking mm, maybe one day so you see the seed has been planted it has but i'm trying to avoid it as much as i can and then you watched chris jubilee's exactly. review and you were like oh, i have to have one now. and i placed my order with grace <laughs> i was missed it. now i've got my 51 8 i'm very happy with it but 51 sue is according to many people is fantastic lens yes it's big and heavy but as you told me it's worth the wait isn't it yeah it's worth carrying that around. I, I do think it's beautiful. Yeah. When are you getting one? Uh, I don't know. Well, I've got my macro now. It's yeah. like, it's a completely different thing, but I just too many lenses in the 50 mil focal length for me. That's true. One day we are going to have to review every single 50 available for the Z lineup. Starting from pre-EI? <laughs> yeah. Why not? 
It's I've got a long video. Yeah, it will be a long video. But I think it would be fun. Like the 50s, all of the 50s, all the way up to the 51.2, including the 51.8 and the macro, all of them. What about 58 not? That's a 58. That's different. Okay. You just want to review that one. That's yes. fine. We can do that too if you want. I just want a Nikon to loan it to me for a year. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just going to do a long-term review. <laughs> <laughs> my year with the 58 mil f0.95 and it's just basically pictures from my garden <laughs> for a year nothing else and occasionally tilly yes and a brick wall excellent speaking of review there's actually another review so um we have matt irvin who compares z42 uh, f2 lens 35 1.8 lens 51.8 lens and also viltrox 35 1.8 lens wow. so he got them all Surprise, at least someone has them. Um, and he compared them, so do check it out. For your weekend read and watch segment, we've got Nick or the Thousand One Nights number 79. This is a write-up article thing of the W Nickel C, C stands for coated, mm -hmm. 2.8 centimeter F3.5, a standard lens for landscape photography that produced many masterpieces by Haru Osato. Mm. It's actually a lovely little um blog if you like on the Nikon website and includes sample images of the 2.8 centimeter used with an L to Z adapter as they call it yeah they even have some pictures taken with Z6 and this lens Z7 to it. Z7 yes yeah. so that's pretty cool I personally think once they reach 100 articles they should just publish as a book I think that would be great. Very cool. Anyway, well worth a read if you've got some time this weekend uh, and have a look at those sample images too. Last up. Last up. Bit of fun. A bit of fun. The 2021 Comedy Wildlife finalists have been announced. Shall we go and look at the shortlist? We should. All right, let's do that. <laughs> okay. So we're starting with the, the smiley happy snake. The smiley happy snake. Okay. Is it to you when you found out the Z9 release date? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> This is not just me in the morning. This is you in the morning. This one is me before I've had my coffee. Very gracious. I know. It's lovely. Can you turn your head 180 degrees? No, no. no. I can barely <laughs> turn it. I can barely turn it 90 degrees. <laughs> All right. This is Nikon versus Sony, isn't it? <laughs> but yes. <laughs> Let's not say who's who. All right. That's again another happy customer with Z9 announcement. Absolutely. All right. Oh, that, that's me looking at that 51 2 lens. Giving just secretly. The, the 51 2 the... like, I'm not looking, I'm not looking, but I'm looking. <laughs> that the, is so cute. Is that, is that the comment section of any YouTube video? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, okay. Oh, that's amazing. We love you. Yes. This is me answering when is that 9 coming out? <laughs> Another happy customer. Another happy customer. <laughs> This one is when we tell people that their 105 macro hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's basically people on both sides of the phone line, isn't it? Yes, so it's, like, it's us as well. Yeah, where's my 105? Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. This is me waiting for 105 micro, <laughs> patiently. Oh. This is whole Nikon rumors section. This is yeah. This is the living embodiment of Nikon That's rumors. That's me and Becky discussing the actual Z9 <laughs> release date. <laughs> okay. Happy Nikon customers. Yeah, this is. <laughs> and this is Nikon, a TPS show hiding from us asking where the Z9 is. That's right. This one is uh, when when you get top priority on a Grace Westminster waiting list. No, when you literally get Z9 delivered when you get to you. Z9. And you just get this and just go to bed with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is actually me doing an investigative report. <laughs> that's how we get the Nikon rumors. That is. That's how we find out what's happening. It's a great shot. Me climbing Nikon's office. Yeah. Wherever they are. To see if uh, if there's any Z9s on the table. What did you do on the weekend? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> this was at least one of the Nikon staff <laughs> hiding behind the counter when we mentioned the fateful Z9. And he said, well, I can't tell you, but if you ask me three times, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> that's what he did. Fantastic. That's it. But before we go, we have a small announcement to make. From next week, we're going to have a new segment on our show, which is called the question of the week. If you have a question to ask us, do put it in the comments below under this video. And the best question we will read and answer. Obviously, we're a news-based podcast, so we're going to talk about this. Yeah. What do you do for a living or what's your hobby as a part of photography? We're not going to answer that. Probably not. What do I do for a living? 
<laughs> you make I, up news and then you talk about it. I just drift yeah. through life like a butterfly. And uh, if you want to know our hobbies, you can find out on Instagram by following us. Constantine. At Constantine Koshkin and Becky. At Rebecca underscore Denezi. Nobody uses underscores anymore, but I thought I would because. Because why not? Because I'm cool like that. Also, if you have a rumor to share, do send it to Media Grace of Westminster. Mm, absolutely. Right. Thank you very much for watching and or listening. Please give us a like and a subscribe or a follow and maybe even a review if you're listening on a podcast platform. Absolutely. We are on the track to 10,000 subscribers. Yes, we would like to hit 10K before the end of... This month? This month. <laughs> All right, well, we try. We try. It's a, it's a high bar. It is, but I think we can make it. With your help. With your help. So tell your friends. Your tell family. your family. What's up, everyone? Make a YouTube account for your dog and then make them subscribe. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.